Hey, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Okay, let's give ourselves a minute for everyone to join in. All right. So good morning, everyone. My name is Adrian. I'm from Cytron Rural Education Team. Uh, today we have Al Hamid. He will be here to introduce to you what is a microcontroller, and he'll be doing um, two simple comparison between Raspberry Pi Pico and Arduino. Okay, uh, I see people still coming in. If you have your friends who are not here yet, please invite them into this live stream. Um, I believe that this live stream will be important to you if you're working on a school project, if you are attending a competition, um, we'll be giving a lot of tips on how you can implement electronics and microcontroller in your projects. So please invite your friends, invite your teachers, if they have time, ask them to join in this live stream. But if they can't make it, it's okay. This live stream will be available on our YouTube channel. So you can, you can always rewatch it on our channel. And um, last but not least, if you have any questions, please drop your questions in the chat box down below or at the right side on your screen. Um, we will be able to answer you immediately during our live session. And of course, we'll have a Q&A session by the end of this, uh, this live stream as well. So stick with us for this one hour and I hope we'll be able to help you on your projects, give you good tips on how you can win your competition with all these microcontrollers. And I think that's it. Let me pass, let me introduce to you our speaker today, Al Hamid uh, from our engineering marketing team. He's a marketing engineer and he has been doing a lot of Pico projects, Pico videos, and Recabit, a microbit videos as well. So uh, Al Hamid, to you and thank you for doing this today. Uh, I hope that you'll be able to share and inspire a lot of students here on how we can use microcontrollers in our projects. Okay, I'll pass the floor to you. Thank you. All right. Hi, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us in this session. My name is Alhamid, and today I'm excited to introduce you to the awesome world of microcontrollers. So in this session, we will explore two popular microcontroller platforms, the Raspberry Pi Pico and the Maker Ono. So you might be wondering what exactly is a microcontroller and why should you be interested in it? Uh, imagine a tiny computer that can be programmed to interact with the physical world, control electronic components, and make decisions based on uh, input and receive it. So that's what a microcontroller, it's a powerful tool that allows you to bring your creative ideas to life by adding intelligence and functionality to your projects. Microcontrollers are all around us from the devices we use in our daily lives to the advanced technologies that shape our life today. So by understanding and using microcontrollers, you can turn your ideas into reality in a simple and exciting ways. Uh, today, we will focus on two microcontroller platforms, the Raspberry Pi Pico and the Maker Ono. We will exp explore their features, discuss their abilities, and discover how they can be applied in school projects. So by the end of this session, you will have a solid understanding of microcontrollers and be inspired to use them into your own creative projects. So let's get started. All right, uh, let's talk more about the microcontrollers. So basically a microcontroller is like a small computer that can control and make decisions about things in the real world. It has its own little brain, 
memory and special parts that help it interact with the world around it. The purpose of a microcontroller is to help us create and control different projects. It can make lights turn on and off, make robots move, uh, measure temperature or humidity, and even play music or games. Microcontrollers come in, in, in different shapes and sizes, but today we will focus on two microcontroller platforms, the Raspberry Pi Pico and the Maker Ono. So imagine a small smart device that can understand what we want it to do, then does it for us. That's a microcontroller. All right, now let's take uh, a closer look at some of the important features of a microcontroller. These features play a great role in, in how a microcontroller functions and how it can be used for different kinds of projects. The first component we have here is the processor. Uh, the processor is like the brain of a microcontroller. Just like our brain helps us think and make decisions, the processor helps the microcontroller do the same. It's the part that carries out instructions and does calculations. Think of the processor as a really fast problem solver. It can quickly process the information and perform tasks based on what uh, it's programmed to do. So when we program a microcontroller, we are giving instructions to the processor we tell it what task to do or to perform and what decisions to make and how it interacts with the outside world through the input and output pins. Next, we have the memory. Also, just like we have a memory to remember things, a microcontroller has its own memory too. But instead of remembering where we put our stuff or what we ate for breakfast, the memory in the microcontroller stores important information that help it work. The memory in, in a microcontroller is important because it allows the microcontroller to remember and recall information quickly. Without the memory, the microcontroller wouldn't be able to store and use instructions or data. So this is gonna make it impossible to form its tests. So when we program a microcontroller, we write instructions that are stored in the program memory. And the microcontroller used the data memory to store and manip manipulate the temporary information uh, as it's working. Then we have the input and output pins. Uh, imagine a microcontroller as a little device with arms and legs. This arms and legs are called input and output pins. They allow the microcontroller to connect and communicate with the outside world. Just like we use our hands to interact with the objects, the IO pins are used by the microcontroller to interact with different uh, electronic components. These components can be things like buttons, sensors, light, motors, and more. So, for example, if you want to connect an LED to I.O. pin, the microcontroller can send signals to turn the LED on or off. This allows you to control lights, sounds, movement using the microcontroller. So again, think of the I.O. I, I pins uh, as the microcontroller's way of reaching out and interacting with the world. All right, so obviously a microcontroller needs power to work. The power supply is what provides the, the necessary electrical energy to the microcontroller. Think of the power supply as the, as the fuel or battery for the microcontroller. It can be powered in different ways, such as through batteries or by plugging it into an elect electrical outlet. When the microcontroller is powered on, it becomes alive and ready to do tasks. The power supplies uh, 
uh, ensure that the microcontroller has the energy to do uh, different tasks and functions. Without the power, the microcontroller wouldn't be able to think or process information or control other devices. Last thing we have on the list here is the programming. And programming here is like giving instructions to a microcontroller, just as we follow, just as we follow a recipe to bake a cake or play a game by following the rules. A microcontroller follows a set of instructions to perform specific tasks. So think of programming as a language that the microcontroller understand. Instead of using words, we use a special code that tells the microcontroller what to do. It's like speaking the microcontroller language so it can understand and carry out our commands. When we write a program for a microcontroller, we are essentially giving a list of step-by-step -step instructions. These instructions can be include things like turning on or off the certain components, reading values from sensors, or making decisions based on the inputs. All right, so again, we said that the microcontrollers are special computers that are different from other computing devices, like laptops or smartphones. And here is how they are different. The first element we have here is the purpose. Uh, microcontrollers are designed for specific tasks, like controlling the uh, uh, controlling uh, uh, objects in the real world or performing simple functions. They are like little helpers that focus on doing one job really well. Other computing devices like laptops or smartphones are designed for general purpose. And they can do many different things, like browsing the internet, play games, or running complex software. Next element, we have the size. So as you may know, microcontrollers are much smaller in size comparing to other computing devices. They are small and can easily fit into small projects. On the other hand, uh, laptops or smartphones are larger and have bigger screens and more components because they need to handle a wide range a wide range of tasks the third element we have the complexity so microcontrollers are easy, easier in terms of their hardware and software compared to other computing devices they have uh, fewer components and are optimized for efficiency and low low power consumptions Laptops and smartphones, on the other hand, are more complex and have larger memory and advanced features to handle a wide range of applications. The last element is interaction with the real world. So again, one of the main differences is how is the microcontrollers interact with the real world. Uh, microcontrollers have special pins called input and output and that allow them to connect and control things like sensors, motors, light, and buttons. This enables them to sense and react to the environment. Other computing devices like laptops and smartphones are mainly designed for interacting with humans through screens or touch interfaces. So these are basically the differences between the microcontrollers and other computing devices. All right, so now that we understand the con concept of the microcontrollers, let's explore the first platform we will be focusing on, the Raspberry Pi Pico. So this is the Raspberry Pi Pico. And as you can see, it's a small and powerful microcontroller board. The Pico is designed to be beginner friendly. So it's a great choice for learning about microcontrollers. It has all the essential components needed to get started. Programming the Bico is also straightforward. You can use programming languages like 
MicroPython or CircuitPython. Uh, there are plenty of resources and tutorials uh, available to help you get started, even if you are new to programming. All right, uh, now let's talk about the features of the PyPico. The first thing is the size. So as you can see, the Raspberry Pi Pico is very small, similar to the size of a candy bar. This compact size makes it uh, super convenient to fit into all kinds of projects. So whether you are building a robot, weather station, or gaming device, this is, can be suitable for you. Also, the, the Pi Pico is easy to, easy to program. We can teach the Raspberry Pi Pico what to do by writing instructions called code. But don't worry, coding is like giving a step-by-step -step directions in a language that the Pico understand. You can use simple and beginner-friendly languages like Python or C++ to write your code. Uh, there are plenty of online resources and tutorials available to guide you uh, along your way on learning how to program. Uh, and this is, will make it easier for you to get started and create uh, any creative projects that you have. Next, we have uh, the connections or the pins. So again, the Raspberry Pi Pico is equipped with uh, special pins called GPIO pins. And these pins uh, allow the Pico to connect and communicate with other uh, components, such as lights, sensors, or buttons. Uh, next, and this is a special one, is the wireless connectivity. So for those uh, using the Raspberry Pi Pico W, it has an extra special feature, which is the built-in Wi-Fi. So this means the Pico can connect to the internet wirelessly. With the Wi-Fi connectivity, you can control your projects remotely. So imagine creating a smart home project that can be controlled from your smartphone. And this is, can be possible because of the Wi-Fi feature on the Pico W. The last one is the community and resources. So the Raspberry Pi Pico has a large supportive community. This means you are not alone in your journey. You can connect with these people, share your projects, and seek help and inspiration from others. Uh, the community is always creating and sharing tutorials and projects idea, and this is, will make it easier for you to explore uh, and see what you can do with the Raspberry Pi Pico. All right, now let me introduce you to the MakerPi Pico. And this is an expansion board that is specifically designed to improve and simplify the functionality of the Pi Pico. So this is will make it even more powerful and exciting to work with. So let's explore why the MakerPi Pico is such a great addition to your Pi Pico projects. All right. so. First of all, we have the LED indicators. These LEDs uh, can act as tiny lights that can help you troubleshoot and understand what's happening with your project. They can show if a pen is sending or receiving signals, and this is can make it easier to identify and fix any issues you might encounter. Also, the MakerPi Pico comes with three push buttons at the bottom. And these buttons are acting like a switches that you can press to make something happen, right? You can use them to control different aspects of your project, like turning on and off the lights, triggering sounds, or navigating through menus. Uh, also, you will be having an RGB LED over here. And this LED can produce different colors, uh, which allows you to create nice visual effects in your projects. You can control the colors and brightness and make it uh, perfect for 
uh, creating a colorful, colorful light project. Okay, next we have the buzzer. And this one can produce different sounds when activated. So it's like a mini speaker that you can use to play melodies and sound effects. Also, you will have uh, at the sides here, six groove ports. The Maker Pi Pico uh, featured this, these ports to make the connection easier with the components and the sensors. So I believe these are the most important features of the Maker Pi Pico, and there are many more. Okay. So now let's 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 shift our focus to the Maker Onum. Uh, and this is a great board designed specifically for makers and beginners. And based on the popular Arduino Ono board, the Maker Ono offers a user-friendly platform for bringing your project's idea to life. Okay, so here I have listed three features for the Maker Ono. Number one is that it's fully compatible with the Arduino programming language. So this means you can use the same programming concepts and code examples that are widely available for Arduino boards. Also, it has uh, built-in LEDs, buzzer, and button. So with this, you can uh, make sounds, uh, make projects that act like a switches. And also you can uh, feature this LED to, to troubleshoot any, any problem that you, you face with your, with your projects. Lastly, uh, it ut utilizes the widely available micro USB cable, this one. And I believe uh, you probably already have it at home or school. And this means you can power your Maker Ono by connecting it to a computer or a USB wall adapter or even a power, a power bank. So this convenient way uh, power option ensure that you can work on your projects without worrying about finding power sources. All right, uh, in this table, since we have talked about the Maker On and the Maker Pi Pico, to make it easier for you, I have listed all the key differences between the Maker Ono and the Maker Pi Pico. So let's talk about the built-in features. As you can see with the Maker Ono, uh, just now we said it has LEDs, buzzer, and button. While with the Maker Pi Pico, we have LED as well, three push buttons, while in the Maker Ono, we have only one. Uh, we have the RGB LED, new pixel. We have buzzer, and we have six groove ports to make the connection easier, and other features as well. So again, if we talk about these sensor connections, with the Maker Ono, it can be a bit complicated and messy when, when, when you connect uh, the Maker Ono to sensors or other components. But with the Maker Pi Pico, uh, that's not the case because it's gonna be much easier because you are using the groove ports. All right, the wireless feature. In the Maker Ono, you don't have that feature, but with the Maker Pi Pico, if you are using the Pico W, you can you can connect your, your microcontroller to a Wi-Fi. Okay, code storage. While working with the Maker Ono, you can only uh, save and use single code. You cannot do more than that. But with the Maker Pi Pico, you can save multiple codes so you don't have to write different codes every time you want to use this or that. So you can save them all and you can run uh, any of them whenever you want, all right? Programming language. So with the Maker Ono, you can use 
and the C++, while with the MakerPy Pico, there is the C, C++, MicroPython, and CircuitPython. So this is give you uh, more options to find the suitable language for you and uh, start programming your microcontroller with it. OK, so now that we have learned about the Raspberry Pi Pico and the Maker Ono, let's explore some projects that you might find interesting and inspire you. OK, so here are some easy examples of how microcontrollers can be applied to your projects. The first one is displaying temperature on the screen. With a MakerPy Pico, you can create a project that measures the temperature using sensors and display it on the screen. This can be helpful for monitoring the temperature and your surroundings. The next project we have is the distance measurement. So by using ultrasonic sensor and the MakerPy Pico, you can build a device that measure distance. And this can be useful for projects like creating a parking sensor or anything else. OK, so here we have uh, intermediate applications. We have one example, which is the smart security system. So basically, you can create a smart security system for your home. Uh, it can include features like motion detection, door sensor, and alarm to improve the security of your surroundings. Also, you can build uh, a smart plant watering system. So by using sensors that measure the soil moisture, uh, you can create a system that water plants automatically when the soil gets dry. This ensures your plants receive the right amount of water even when you are not around. All right, here's some of the advanced applications. Uh, you can create a line following robot. So the MakerPy Pico is perfect for building robots. Uh, an advanced project could be creating a line following robot. So by using sensors to detect the lines on the floor, you can design a robot that, that can follow a line or a specific path. Also, you can create IoT projects. And IoT stands for the Internet of Things, which refer to connecting to everyday objects to the Internet. So you can create IoT projects like smart home automation system, where you can control lights and security system using your smartphone or voice commands. So these are just a few examples of how microcontrollers can be applied in your projects. All right, now let me demonstrate to you uh, a project that we can use with the Maker Ono and the Maker Pi Pico. I will be showing you guys how to display the temperature on the OLED screen, this one, OK? We'll try once to do it with the Maker Ono, and then we will use the Maker Pi Pico. So let's get started. Let me share my entire screen so you can see the code. OK, give me a second. Adrian, can you add my screen? All right. So again, as I told you, we will be displaying the temperature using the DHT11 sensor, this one. And this one can sense the temperature and humidity in the environment. And we will display the, da the, data, the data on the OLED screen, this one, using the 
maker owner. So to write the program for the maker owner, you can use the Arduino IDE, all right? And I already have written the code, so it should look something like this, all right? We have added the libraries for the DHT sensor and the OLED. And if you can see, I already make the connections between the components. Here's the maker ono. I have connected to the uh, DHT sensor and the OLED over here. So let me plug in the USB cable to the computer and the other side to the maker ono. Okay, now I have connected the maker ono. And you can see the LED indicators already turned on to tell me that which components that I have connected um, the maker on it to. All right, so let me upload the code to the maker on and show you guys how it's going to look like. OK, so I have done uploading the code. And as you can see here, the temperature is displayed on the OLED, all right? So this program is written using the C++ language because this is what you're gonna use with the maker on. Let me do the same thing, but this time with the maker pi pico and show you what is the difference between the maker on and the Maker Pi Pico in doing only this project, all right? Okay, so for the Maker Pi Pico, we will be using the uh, Sony editor this time, not the Arduino IDE. So there is a lot of options for you to program the Pi Pico. You can use Sony, uh, Sony editor or uh, other options as well, okay? So let me open it. Okay. So again, in order for us to write the code for the Maker Pi Pico, we can use the Sony editor. And before we upload the code or anything else, let me show you how the connection is made with the Maker Pi Pico using the same components that we have used with the Maker On. Okay, so we have here the OLED and the Proof DHT sensor. All right, so here's the sensor, the DHT 11 sensor is connected to a groove cable to make it easier for us to connect it to the Maker Pi Pico and the OLED, all right? So let's connect the OLED first to the Maker Pi Pico and we will connect this one to, uh, yeah, to the first groove over here. That's it. So we plug in the groove port and to the specific pins that we are going to use in our code. Also, this is the same sensor we use with the Maker Ono. I will connect it to uh, another groove port, this one. And just by simply plugging in this sensor to the Maker Pi Pico, uh, and after uploading the code, the program should be ready and the project should, should be ready. So as you can see the differences between the Maker Pi Pico and the Maker Ono. Here it's a bit complicated and messy, but in here it's more neat, right? So let me upload the code to the Maker Pi Pico. Okay, give me a second. Yeah, so that's it. Now you can see we have the output or the data 
that we receive from the uh, DHT sensor to the OLED over here. So maybe also you have noticed that the code in, in the, uh, while using the MakerPy Pico is much easier and comparing to the Arduino IDE. So this is all what we needed to write the code for the MakerPy Pico. And for the Arduino, we have used a bunch of lines to make the same thing happen with the MakerPy Pico. And I guess this is the advantage of using the circuit Python language, right? It's much easier to comparing to other coding languages. So I think that's it uh, about our session today. We have covered the microcontrollers. What are they in general? We have a general idea about them. And then we talk about the difference between the microcontrollers and other computing devices. Then we talk about the Raspberry Pi Pico, right? And its features. And then we talk about the Maker Pi Pico and how it can make the Pico, Pi Pico uh, microcontroller more powerful and simplify the work with it. Then we talk about the Maker Ono, its features, and then we have seen all the differences between the Maker Ono and the Maker Pi Pico. And here are some of the examples we have discussed. Uh, and then we make a demonstration. And uh, for you guys, if you want to explore more projects and uh, get inspired, you can visit our tutorial page. Uh, you, there is a lot of tutorials for the Maker Pi Pico and the Maker Ono as well. So you can scan the code and join us uh, by creating more tutorials. All right. So Adrian, could you please join me? Yes, okay. All right. Thanks, Alma, for the wonderful sharing. Um, yeah. I think we still have time. So I'm going to open up the floor for um the participants here if you have any questions for alma please drop your questions in the chat right now um okay while we wait for their questions i have a few questions for Ahmed. um mm -hmm. so if i'm a student and i am working on the project because arduino is quite popular in school these days so whenever we think about making a project we will pick arduino right mm -hmm. and um, but could you tell me what's the, you know, what's the key point or the strength, uh, on using MakerPy Pico instead of Arduino in my projects? Like, well, how, how will it help me if I'm a student, a high school student? Okay. I, I can, I can think of two main uh, differences between the MakerPy Pico and Arduino. See, with the MakerPy Pico, uh, it can be used with the circuit Python language, right? Or MicroPython. Right. And this is compared to the Arduino. It's much, much easier to write the code. It's more simplified. So you can make uh, the same kind of project with the Arduino, but with more or less um, code of lines with the circuit Python or the MicroPython. This is one thing. It's easier to do the projects or do the programming with the MakerPy Pico. The other thing is that uh, the MakerPy Pico, the board itself, it's already equipped with the main stuff or the main components that we need, like buttons, uh, buzzer, right, to make sounds. We have uh, the RGB pixel. We have the groove ports and these are really important because it makes the connection really easier for us and makes our project look nice and neat, right? While if we want to use the Arduino, you can see how messy it is, right? And this is, we just connect two components, the 
LED and the DHT sensor. Imagine if we added more. So it can be more complicated. So yeah, this is what comes to my mind. Okay, thank, thanks for the uh, comprehensive reply. Uh, if, if I don't have any basic knowledge in Python, and mm -hmm. I, but I have learned Arduino. So I have done Arduino, I have some knowledge in Arduino. Do you think it's um, easy for me to convert it to, to Python if I'm a student, right? Yeah, if you, if you have a background with the Arduino already, it will be, I think, really easier for you. And once you get started with the Python, you will notice like how, how easy is that? And also with the all resources in the, in the internet and all the tutorials, you can really uh, learn the language really fast, especially if you have a background with the uh, Arduino coding language. It shouldn't be difficult for you. Yeah. All right. Um, and also okay. I can add on the Wi-Fi feature. This thing, you cannot find it with the Arduino, unless if you are using specific port like ESP or whatsoever. But with the Pico W, right? Uh, it this this uh, microcontroller already has a Wi-Fi built uh, in it, so this can give you more option to connect your um, a Pico W or the Maker Pi to the internet, and then you can use your smartphone to control your sensors, create a mobile robot, right? just using the port itself, the Pico W. So you don't have to add on any other components. So this is a really great feature. And even uh, working with the, with the Wi-Fi uh, feature on the Pico W, it, it's not that difficult. It's really easy and straightforward. You just insert the, your Wi-Fi uh, name and password and that's it become connected and then you write your code right away. And of course, if you go online, you will see uh, many, many kind of uh, different projects that are uh, using the, this feature of the Wi-Fi. So you can get inspired. Yeah. Okay. So it comes with a Wi-Fi module. Does this mean that it's more expensive? No, not at all. That's not the case, yeah. It's pretty much, I guess, pretty much the same with the uh, normal Pi Pico board. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But this is like right. a new okay. version of it. Okay. So I can choose not to use the Wi Fi feature and the programming and everything will still be the same. Yeah, yeah. Um, Nothing changed. It will be okay. the same. Okay, my next question. Um, so if I were to get a Pico, does mm -hmm. this mean that I have to get a special sensors for the, you mentioned the groove ports for Maker Pi Pico? Because Arduino, I can just connect it on a breadboard, but for Maker Pi Pico, I have to use the wires and connect it to the sensors, the special sensor. Do I need to get a special Proprietary sensors for Maker Pi Pico. Uh, the Maker Pi Pico, like that is, I can think of one sensor that already has on it the temperature sensor. If you want to try it out, so yeah, that's not the case with the Arduino. So you can uh, display the temperature uh, on the window shell on your Sony editor just using the port itself. It has already temperature sensor. But of course, if you want to add more sensors to it, like I can think of light sensor or anything else, you can purchase that. But if you want to just get started and try it out, there, there is the temperature sensor on it. OK. If I'm working on my Arduino projects and I've really bought all the sensors, mm -hmm. does this mean that I have to change all the sensors? No, or... no, no. Should be the should be the same, yeah. 
Yeah. So I can All use you need the is the for those cables, and this is will comes with the Maker Pi, I guess. Box. I'm not sure about it, but if if it doesn't come, you you just need to buy the groove groove cables. This one. So you can connect yeah, your sensors to it. Yeah. Okay. All right. The Maker Pi Pico. Okay. So it works with all the sensors from Arduino. I can. It's compatible, basically, the sensors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just the same. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so if I were to build, um, yeah, the, the way I see it is MakerPy Pico, it has built in more built in functions than Maker Uno, and then it's more simpler to connect the hardware, so I don't have to spend a lot of time connecting yes. those hardware, exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, all right. Then I see that there are like what six ports on the MakerPy Pico. Mm -hmm. Does this mean that I can only connect six? Right? Does this mean that I can oh, only yeah. connect six different sensors to yeah, the exactly. MakerPy Pico? Can I connect more than that? Yeah, you can connect more, I guess, if you are using the pen header over here. All right. All right. Yeah. So it's it still allows me to connect it like Maker Uno with the wires yeah yeah okay. and also like, like here we have the buttons like we have three of them and this is going to be really useful for different kinds of projects yeah and here we have the puzzle yeah audio jack you know to connect it to a speaker okay so yeah basically it has everything oh, over commented dual core 32-bit MCU, Arduino is 8-bit, means it's faster. Um, if, if let's say I, what's my question again? Okay, I already got my question. Make a pie, Pico, if I, yeah. I wanted to ask a question. Slip my mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me rethink about the question. Yeah, sure. No so questions if from the I'm, uh, Yeah, any questions from the floor? I think at the moment, Pico, there are a few block based programming out there. It's just that it's not heavily supported yet. Um, it's still recommended to use Python, right? Circuit Python, Micro Python. Yeah. Micro. Uh, what's the Python. difference between yeah. Circuit Python and Micro Python? I can think that the Circuit Python has a lot of libraries that comes with it, right? So these libraries, uh, or there is already code built into it, right? So once you import that library into uh, uh, programming workspace, you don't have to write a lot of coding lines. It's mm -hmm. already simplified the process for you. So yeah, okay. you just import the libraries that you need in Circuit Python and just write a bunch of lines. And yeah, you can do the task or the the thing that you want to do with your sensor or whatever it is. Okay. Yeah. But with the micro Python, I believe that you you mm -hmm. you have to go in more uh, details or more uh, coding lines to give instructions to your controller what to do exactly, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Come. <laughs> That's a question about Miko. No, come. Why can't I connect Maker Uno with my laptop? It says no driver found. I think it means um, you need to install the driver. I think it's called the CH340 uh, driver. 
can go ahead and search for CH340 driver uh, on the internet and then just download it, install it and then connect your USB to your laptop. Then it should find the driver. Um, you need the driver first uh, before you use the maker owner. But um, does this happen to maker pipe Pico as well? Like driver issues? Uh no. There's no issue. Such issue would be maker pipe Pico. Okay. Uh, at the beginning you just have to install the the driver like whether it's for the circuit python you are working with or the micro python mm -hmm. so you just mm -hmm. install it and that's it all right okay. let me share with you the link of the uh, driver for the maker owner okay. right so right. oh in, uh, already installed but how to connect it he already installed the mm -hmm. ch340 but how to connect it okay I believe it means like, if it doesn't work, um, you can go to your device manager and double check the serial port, whether it's, you know, it will put an unknown there, means there's no driver found. If there's a driver found, then it will show you a port number. Yeah. But uh, for Maker Pi, yeah, you, oh, you don't need a USB UART serial IC, so no need driver. Right, this is from over. You don't need a driver for Maker Pi Pico. I think that's a plus point because uh, I've seen a lot of issues with Maker Uno when you use a new PC, you, you will surely have a driver issue. Right? So you need to download the driver, you need to install the driver. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a plus point. Okay, um, for someone, I think we can support you in our group, which is what we are sharing right now. We will share right now over here. So we have a community, but if you're already in one of our community groups, please highlight their uh, questions for CH340. We'll be able to support you there. And um, if you're really keen in learning more about raspberry pi um, educational products or also our softwares or even python please join our growing community here this is our telegram group uh, i'll drop the link in the chat so uh, you're welcome to join our community if you have questions about raspberry pi uh, how to start get started with maker pi pico in your projects uh, please join us in this group uh, and if you have any feedback about today's session the the link below uh, please scan the link below and uh, give us a feedback on what you think uh, if you have if you have topics that you want to hear in the future do let us know by scanning the link as well all right i think i have one more question i finally remember what question i wanted to ask okay. earlier um, for Maker Uno, when we program the Maker Uno, the code goes into the Maker Uno. So later on, I can use a power bank to connect the Maker Uno and it still runs that same code. Okay, I don't have yeah. to worry about um you know leaving my laptop with the Maker Uno at all that all the time. But for Maker Pi Pico, you mentioned that it can save multiple codes. So yeah. how yeah. does it you know? know which code to run when I connect it to a power bank. See, I'm not sure about it, but I believe it always run uh, a code file that's called main or code.py. Uh -huh. I, yeah, uh -huh. I, I haven't experienced that or tried that out yet. So I'm not sure really. But it so has that feature to save the code, multiple codes inside the driver of the Pi Pico, yeah. Right. Uh, I think Obo mentioned that it becomes a mass storage on plug into USB port. I think that's how it saves multiple code. And then the file in the Maker Pi Pico. So it saves the files in Maker Pi Pico. And you mentioned that what code dot py it will yeah. run the code with the specific name 
I'm not sure about it actually. All right. All right. Yeah. I believe there's a feature that allows you to pick a code whenever you power it on. Um, I think that's the that's a code that when you connect it to the Maker Pi Pico, it will start playing music and stuff. So yeah. I think that's what's happening. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think um, we have reached the end of our session. If you got, you guys have any more questions, please. Uh, join us in our telegram group feel free to ask us in the telegram group and uh, of course this session will be recorded and uh, published in our youtube channel if you want to rewatch the recorded session uh, by all means go back to our youtube channel subscribe to our youtube channel and you'll be able to uh, share it with your friends share it with your students and rewatch this session again okay i think that's all from us um any last word for our participants today um Thank you guys for joining us. I hope you learned some stuff about the microcontrollers and the Maker Pi Pico and the Maker Ono. And I hope to see you guys uh, utilize them in your projects. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Ahmed, for your time today. And uh -huh. I truly really appreciate your sharing session with them uh, between Maker Uno and Maker Pi Pico. So, same thing. We hope that you'll be able to implement microcontrollers in your projects. Um, we can't tell you for sure that you, you'll be able to learn every 100% all about microcontrollers in this one hour, but um, this Telegram group will be a start for you today. If you join and if you have questions, don't forget to ask, 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 so that we'll be able to support you. So thank you for joining and uh, we will see you in the Telegram group soon. Okay, thank you everyone and yeah, see you. Bye. Bye. All right. Thank you everyone.